All right, today we're going to go over a piece of information on matrices, well actually three pieces. Uh, we're going to talk about transpose, inverse, and determinant. So our first thing we're going to talk about is the transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix is when you take your matrix and you turn your rows into the columns or your columns into the rows. You flip-flop it. So for example, here we have the matrix that is a 2 by 3 matrix. So you're going to flip the columns and rows. So instead of 2 by 3, it's going to become a 3 by 2. And then what you do here is the first row, the first row that goes across is 2, 4, 7. That will instead become the first column. So here you'll see the first column goes 2, 4, 7. The second row, which was 5, 3, 1, becomes the second column, 5, 3, 1. So all you're doing is you're flipping these. And the way we know a transpose is we use a superscript kind of like it looks like an exponent but it'll be a t so a t is stands for the transpose of a now we can transpose square matrices as well uh, their dimensions will not change but the position of the numbers will all right Next, we have the inverse of a matrix. So the inverse has the same general rule as the inverse of a number or a variable or a function, where if you multiply a matrix by its inverse, it gives you the matrices version of 1, which is the identity matrix. So for example, for multiplication, uh, the inverse of 3 is 1 third, and we know if we do 3 times 1 third, we get 1. So for matrices, the inverse of a matrix is whatever matrix you can multiply, and well, not whatever, it's a specific thing, um, to get the identity matrix. The important part here is that it has to work both ways. So the inverse is something where, because we know with multiplying matrices, order does matter, the inverse has to be able to be multiplied first or second and give you the identity matrix both times. So that's what we can do to use to check if two matrices are inverse matrices. So we can take then use that if we're given matrices without necessarily knowing how to determine if they are or not. And then the last thing we have here is the determinant of a matrix. The determinant of a matrix is a single number that you can get by performing some information. So to compute the inverse of a matrix, the determinant is required. So you need to figure out the determinant if you want to take a matrix and then find its inverse. So each square matrix, so in order to do inverse matrices and square matrices because, or um, determinants of matrices because of the multiplication having to work both ways, we can only do this with a square matrix. We're only gonna talk about how to do, to do determinants of two by two matrices, but there is a way to do it with larger ones as well. The determinant is needed. So each square matrix has a unit scalar, so it's a scalar number, called the determinant of A. And we use the notation by either saying DETA, or we do what looks like an absolute value. So these bars here for matrices stand for the determinant of A. So first here, we have some general rules. So these are general rules here. If your original matrix A has the terms A, B, C, and D, then the determinant of A is equal to A times D minus B times C. And that is the number you'll get to do, and that will give you a single number that will be your determinant. 
then if we find the determinant in order to get the inverse of matrix, matrix A, so we use the same matrix example here, you change the locations of A and D. So C A is in the top left corner, D is in the top right corner. We're going to flip those and then we're going to make B and C the opposite of their original. We're going to flip their sign. So if they were negative, they would become positive. If they were positive, they become negative. But B and C do not change locations. And then we also multiply this change by 1 over the determinant of A. So obviously just kind of explaining and seeing this is hard to see, so we'll have an example as well. But this here, this bottom part, these are formulas you can use. So A times D minus B times C, that's a formula you can use for the determinant. And then the 1 over the determinant of A times uh, the new matrix here with the changed numbers. So doing this, you'll want to be able to label your numbers that you give and say, okay, this one's A, B, C, and D. All right, so let's start by doing some transpose practice. So I have three examples of transpose. I have two examples of determining if there's a matrix or if two matrices are inverses. And then we have three determinant practices. So first we'll do a transpose. So for this transpose, we start out with a 2 by 3 matrix, and it's going to become a 3 by 2 matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this first row, and we're going to kind of like rotate it to become the first column. So you're going to go in order from left to right, but you're going to go top to bottom. So it's going to become negative 2, 5, 6. And then same thing here. So this was 5, 2, 7. Oops. So it's going to be 5, 2, 7. And then this is the transpose of A. All right, let's see what that looks like with a square matrix. So it is a two by two. It's going to stay a two by two. So the transpose of A is equal to first row is going to become the first column. So one negative two, it's going to go that way instead. And then three negative four. All right, and then last one. So this is a three by two matrix. So why don't you tell me what dimensions will our new matrix have? All right, and then for giving me the new matrix, why don't you go ahead and do that and just do like number, space, number, number, and then hit enter and go to the next line and then do it again and however many times you need to for the correct answer. So go ahead and give me our new matrix. All right, so the new matrix would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the way that I did it is I said, okay, first row becomes the first column. So it went 1, 4. Second row is the second column, 2, 5. Third row is the third column, 3, 6. All right, let's go to our next section. Determine if the matrices are inverses. Um, I should have enough room to do this if I write smaller. 
Okay, so the important thing to determine if they are inverses is you have to attempt the multiplication both ways. So first we have, we're going to multiply them the way that they are right now and figure out if they give us the identity matrix. So as a reminder, they we want them to result in the identity matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, 4, 2 by 2 square matrices. All right. So, I'll do this right here. So remember, we're going to do first one comes from multiplying and adding uh, these two numbers. So we're going to do 3 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2. And then second one over here comes from doing 3 times 1. Sorry, this will be 3 times negative 1. 3 times negative 1 plus 1 times 3. And then we're going to have 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2, and then we're going to have 2 times negative 1 plus 1 times 3. Right, so that gives us 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 2, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 1 times 1, 3 is 3, 2 plus negative 2, negative 2 plus 3, 3 plus negative 2 is 1, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Okay, so it works in this order, but in order for it to be the inverse, we have to have it work when we flip them as well. So we're going to have to flip them and do the multiplication again. All right, so here I have them rewritten in the new order. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do our multiplication. So we're going to do 1 times 3. And I'm actually going to start, I'm going to consolidate a little bit. 1 times 3 is 3 plus negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 1 times 1 is 1, plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, 3 times 2 is positive 6, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 3 times 1 is 3. All right, and that makes it a little bit quicker because I jump right to this step instead of showing the multiplication. 3 plus negative 2 is 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So you'll see that for this one, when we flipped them, they still resulted in the identity matrix. So this does work out these matrices are inverses. So we can write yes or a check mark. All right, so why don't you go ahead and give this one a try um, and instead of making you like write out the matrices, just go ahead and do the work and tell me if you think that these two are inverses. All right, uh, so this question's easier in the sense where we don't have to multiply twice because when you do your first, mul first multiplication, you, you get something that's very definitely not anywhere close to the identity matrix, and as soon as that happens, you can stop. So as a heads up, though, there is a time that you might be given a pair of matrices that the first round of multiplications, it gives you the identity matrix, but remember, for them to be a inverses, it has to work in both directions. So you have to flip them and multiply and check both ways. 
But if your very first try doesn't give you the identity matrix, you can stop and have it right there to tell that that's not the case. So um, the reason I have this one here is you'll see that we have like two and four, and then I moved the two and the four over here and made them negative. And then the seven and the nine are still here. So they're like moved around, but they have like the same overall numbers and they have some negative numbers. But the important for, thing for the inverse is not what the numbers look like, it's your result. So let's go into practicing finding the determinant and the inverse. So here we have three matrices. So we're going to first practice by finding the determinant. So the determinant of A for this one is going to be, remember, it's A, B, C, D. Our determinant is A times D. So 1 times 5 minus b times c, so 2 times 6. 1 times 5 is 5 minus 2 times 6 is 12. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. So the determinant for this matrix is the number negative 7. Our determinant is a number that we get by doing a formula. Then they ask us to find the inverse. So to find the inverse, we're going to take our original matrix. So I'm going to do this in two steps. So the inverse of A is 1 over the determinant. So I'm just going to write it like this, 1 over negative 7 times we flip a and D's location, so A is 1, so 1 is going to go down here instead, and D is 5, so the 5 is going to go up in this corner. And then B and C keep their spots, so the 2 and the 6 keep their spots, but they change sign. So since the 2 was originally positive, it's going to become a negative 2, and since the 6 was originally positive, it's going to become a negative 6. And then our final answer would be to multiply out this fraction here. So we're going to multiply all of these by 1 over 7. So it's going to be 5 times negative 1 7th is going to be negative 5 over 7. Negative 2 times negative 1 7th is just going to become 2 over 7. Negative 6 times negative 1 7th is going to become 6 over 7. And then 1 times negative 1 7th would become negative 1 7th. So this ends up giving us fractions, uh, but also since I didn't give us the room to do it, we're not going to check our answer. Um, you should check your answers to make sure you did it right. Um, and remember, if you did it right, you should be able to multiply it both directions and get your answer here. So let's do uh, another one. So example G we have here. Start with the determinant. Maybe remember it's AD minus BC. Let me know what you get for that. All right, so you should have gotten that the determinant for this one happens to be 5. So now we're going to do our matrix. So the inverse of A, so uh, I'll give you this part. Remember, it's going to be 1 over the determinant, so 1 fifth times. Why don't you do, like I said, number, number, new line, new line. Give me the numbers that will be inside the matrix. All right, so the 2 and the 3 will swap spaces, and then those 1s will become negative 1s. All right. So next we have, we're going to multiply this out. I'll just do this part. And then, so 2 times 1 fifth is 2 fifths. One, negative 1 may give us negative 1 fifth. And then it's another negative 1, so negative 1 fifth. And then the 3 would be 3 fifths. Right? And then last one, why don't you go ahead and give me the determinant 
and give me just the numbers inside the matrix before you multiply the determinant in there. All right, so for this one, it does turn out that our matrix actually works out nicely because um, the determinant for this one happened to be one. Uh, so if we were to multiply that in there, it wouldn't actually change anything because if we multiply anything by one, we get that back. So for this, our, matri our new matrix is one, negative one, negative two, three. And that is the end of this lesson on matrices. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in at the end of this video.